and welcome to episode 21 of Tales from the Midnight Diary. My name is Gemma and I'm so pleased to have you here with me for another chat this week. For those of you that might not know, this is my weekly podcast, video podcast, where I talk about all the things I've been making and I share some of the things that are going on behind the scenes at the Midnight Diary. So that could be dyeing yarn, it could be um, designing patterns, it could be just general musings <laughs> about things. And this month is October, commonly known as Socktober, and so it won't surprise you to know that I've been thinking about socks. So let's start off by saying thank you for coming back if you are a returning viewer. I have got a load of new subscribers from somewhere, which is absolutely lovely. Thank you very, very much for stopping by and choosing to want to see more. Um, does, does a little bit for the ego, that. <laughs> so it's great um, to know that you are here and I hope you are feeling welcome and enjoying the episodes. To returning viewers, thank you as ever for coming back week after week, year after year and putting up with my nonsense. It does mean a lot to me. And if you were here for the very first time, welcome, grab a cup of something because we're just gonna have a chat and possibly a little bit of nonsense along the way. So let's start with some administ administ admin admin let's start with some admin stuff, shall we? So first of all, all the places you can find me are just down below in the description box. If you want to join in with our community, we have a bubbly Facebook group, um, which uh, I'm not running a Ravelry group anymore for reasons that I suspect most of you know. It's not particularly accessible to everyone and I want my uh, corner of the interwebs to be accessible and welcoming. So we are on Facebook, it's called The Midnight Makers, you can find that down below. You can find my shop down below, Instagram, all the places, and I also do have a Ko-fi account to support the podcast. If you want to support the podcast without buying yarn, then you know that's something that you might choose to consider that is down there as well. In other admin news, we have two make-alongs going on at the moment. The first one is a year-long make-along, which is going to be wrapping up in the next two months because where has 2021 gone? Um, and that is the Midnight Make-Along. It does what it says on the tin. If you use a Midnight Diary pattern or a Midnight Diary or Project Bag yarn, because I did rebrand uh, at the start of 2021 from the Project Bag, then you can enter into this make-along to win prizes. I talked about what the prizes were in the last episode, so if you've missed that, you might wanna go and check that out. <laughs> the second one is now in its second or third week, and that is the Great Festive, no, Great Winter Cast On. This is a make-along that I host every year here at the Midnight Diary. Um, basically, it gets to this time of year and I wanna start thinking about winter and getting cozy, and I wanna make all the things. And I know you like making things, so we do the great winter cast on. So there are two elements to this, basically anything you cast on, on or after the 27th of September counts. There is no obligation to finish things and you can win in a couple of different ways. It is an Instagram make along, so you've got the hashtag. Um, I should have said that about midnight make along as well. So that the hashtag flashed up for that one as well. So make sure you are using the hashtag that's on the bottom of your screens right now. If you've got a private account, do tag me in the, uh, in, the uh, in, in your post, my Instagram hashtag, my Instagram hashtag? My Instagram handle is just down below as well with all the other information that I spoke about earlier. And I will be drawing prizes for that at the end of December. However, there is also going to be an extra prize drawn at the end of October. So for everyone who has joined, it, joined in between the 27th of September and the 31st of October, I'm going to be drawing a prize to win one of Hohi Locatelli's uh, fall collection, which I will be flashing pictures up of now. Not a pattern from the fall collection, the entire fall collection from Hohi Locatelli, who is a fabulous designer and her patterns are just beautiful. And I'm sure you'll find something in there that you might like to make for yourself. So to be in with a chance for that, you need to be using the hashtag on Instagram and also get yourself into the Midnight Makers and join in. There's an album, The Great Winter Cast On, you add your pictures to that album, but also have a chat with other people, comment on other people's makes. You never know, might make some prizes. <laughs> 
Okay, so I think that's it for admin. Uh, no finished objects this week. <laughs> so let's move on to works in progress. So there has been a change to my works in progress board. I did allude to the last, in the last episode, the fact that I had frogged my great winter cast on and cheated a little bit. Um, but that I would probably have to cast on again pretty quickly because what I was left with was nothing remotely mindless or potato chippy. I had no socks, I had no garter stitch blanket. Everything was lace or cables or something complicated or a new design. And for me, making isn't just about sort of challenging myself and always making something that's, you know, next level up. I just like to knit and crochet and granny square blankets and garter stitch blankets and socks make me very happy. So you can see in blue the two that have uh, been added. I've recast on the garter Christmas blanket and I've also added another pair of socks to my whip board. Now, as often happens, when you've had a flurry of finishes, you then look at your, your projects. Um, I think even people who just have two or three probably experience this and get a bit of what do I want to work on attention deficit, basically. So I've pretty much been working on all the things this week. I'm not going to show you the two garments because they are both work knits. They're both samples for my day job. Um, nothing to do with the Midnight Diary. So I'm not going to show you those, uh, but everything else I have worked on and I will show you. So let's start with the Slip Stravaganza, which is the 2020 Mystery Knit Along from Stephen West. Last time I showed it to you, I believe I had just done the setup row for the chevrons and there were a myriad of stitch markers on there. You can see my two Betty boots are being very loud. Um, I have actually now completed the first chevron, not that you can really see it because of the way it's click, um, shoved up there. Now there is something ridiculous, there's over 900 stitches and I timed myself and to do two rows, because the first row you do involves um, decreases and increases, the second row you're basically resolving everything, so the second row is, is fairly intuitive. Um, so those two rows together take an hour and a half, so hour and a half? No, hour and 15? The row one takes 45 minutes for me if I'm on a roll, and row two of the repeat takes half an hour, so an hour and 15. So it's quite a long slog. Um, I finished the first chevron and I put it down. So my ambitions of having this done by the time the shawlography was being cast on, on the 8th of October, were sadly not realised. They were a little bit optimistic, but if you have been following this podcast for a while, that won't surprise you. I'm ever the optimist when it comes to my making. <laughs> Um, I am enjoying it. The Part of the reason I put it down is because the stitch markers are driving me balmy. They, they just rattle constantly and it's not very relaxing. So I think the ones that are bigger, I'm going to have to try and find some more of these little light bulb stitch markers and use those instead because this it's just going to drive me dotty and I'm not going to work on it. So this is in my own hand dyed yarns. Uh, I do run the Midnight Diary, which is my hand dyed yarn company. I think I mentioned that at the top of the episode five colorways. I'm going to pop them down below because if people have been watching this podcast for the last year, they're going to be sick to the back teeth of hearing about this shawl. So enough, enough. We're going to pop that away. I'm really looking forward to having that finished. I'm not looking forward to blocking it. I have no idea how in my quite modest home I'm going to manage this. If any of you have knit the shawlography and have any tips on how to block this beast, then let me know. <laughs> the second project that has received significant love from me over the past week, certainly, uh, since I uploaded this podcast, is the Bamba Shawl, which again, if you've been following this for a while, you might recall from way back in 2019 when I started it as a test knit. This is why I don't test knit anymore, okay? I know, I know this about myself. I'm a horrible test knitter. I'm useless at deadlines, so I basically don't do it. But here we are. This is the Bamba shawl. 
It's a design by Maddie Harvey, who is a knitwear designer. I think she's in her fifth year of knitting design now. Um, based in Edinburgh, and she's absolutely lovely. I had the, the great pleasure of meeting her and her family when they came to stay with us at the day job. And this shawl is worked from end to end. So we start with a little point, increase, 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 and then work straight. And then logically we're gonna decrease at the other end. And it uses slip stitches and it uses two different yarns. She designed it in yarn from Whistle Bear, which if you can see my very productive co-host here beside me um, is where he's from. And so I found two equivalent yarns at the day jobs. We've got um, Isaga Alpaca One, held double with Isaga Silk Mohair. So you see that's kind of a greeny colour and that's a yellowy colour. And what you end up with is this lovely gold that's coming up there. And the other colour, the contrast, is Vivacious Four Ply by Fiber Spades. And could not for the life of me tell you what the colour is other than I love it. Gemma loves it. <laughs> it's been too long. I will check my project pages and see if I can find out. Um, if I go far enough back on Instagram, I might be able to find out as well. So we'll see. Either way, the whole thing is starting to remind me of rhubarb and custard. And yeah, so I was down, where was I? Here, last Wednesday. And this is like the tillamine all over again. I've just zipped all the way up here and I've got to do five repeats of this pattern in total, I think. I'm pretty sure I've got to do this five times in total. So I'm like two and a half way through. So I'm about halfway through the middle section of the shawl. So that's quite exciting. Don't think it's going to be finished for you for next week somehow. You might see it for another couple of weeks yet, but I really like it. Um, working with the silk mohair has been interesting. I didn't, hadn't done that before when I started. It's gloriously soft not like the mohair that we grew up with in the 80s and 90s. Um, and the alpaca one, again, is just soft and glorious. Um, the only thing I wish is that the beautiful vibrancy of this fiber space wasn't lost so much because obviously you've got such a fluffy halo that when you're dragging the slip stitches over, they kind of mist over the, um, the fiber space yarn as well in here. So you get a kind of muted effect. So part of me thinks that one day, one day I'm going to treat myself to a couple of skeins of this yarn from Fiber Space and make something special. So now we come to new cast-ons because although this slip extravaganza doesn't take too much concentration at the moment, it's a bit of a slog and the noise of those stitch markers is annoying me. And the bamboo shawl takes a bit more concentration because you've got cables and I'm doing it without a cable needle. I needed something mindless and this is one of my great winter cast-ons and it's meant to be for a Christmas present for my goddaughter. I've already made one for my godson. He doesn't have his yet, they're having it at the same time. So they'll have theirs this Christmas. Um, and it is basically just a giant garter blanket. So all I'm doing is knitting every single row and you end up with, it's not really showing up brilliantly, but this gorgeously squishy um, thing. And this is in the yarn known as it's Yummy by King Cole. Oh, hang on. King Cole Yummy. <clears throat> it is, I believe, 100% polyester, 120 metres, and it is 10, 20 rows and 10 stitches to 10 centimetres. So it is, um, it is chunky, uh, chunky yarn. I'm cast on using the long tail method. Uh, I cast on 100 stitches, and I've got four balls, so I'm just going to work until they've run out. Now, I did get these all at the same time, I believe, from the same supplier. But there's a slight difference, which I'm not sure if it will show up on camera. But for me, it's glaringly obvious where one ball ends and another begins. And it's not my tension, it's, it's the dye lots, probably. And the second ball looks a lot creamier. And I've actually started, so I'm over halfway through this blanket already, because I've actually started the third ball um, so that's not bad going in a week. <laughs> There's about 38 rows to a ball. So um, I've, I did, doo -doo -doo, finished one ball, can't remember what night. And then I think on Sunday during coffee morning, I thought I'd best do a couple more rows. 
and what I decided to do in the end <laughs> was knit the whole ball in the day. It did take me most of the day but I got it done and then on Monday I started the third ball. So I'm trying to do a little bit each day and make sure that I get this done. But at the same time I don't want it done too quickly because then I have to cast something else on that's got to stitch or simple or mindless and I don't want them on my whip board. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm, I'm over halfway there. I think, where did I join on the other? There we go. I joined on the other ball there. And I am, have I done, I think I've done eight rows or 10 rows, something like that, of the new, of the new one. So it's nice and simple, perfect TV knitting, perfect. I'm feeling exhausted and I want to concentrate knitting. Um, and for me, that's what I need. I need a balance. I need something fun to pick up. I need something mindless to pick up. I need something that's going to challenge me. I need something that I just want the finished object from. You know, there's there's a lot of different categories on my whip board that I like to have filled. So I think, I don't think I'm ever going to have fewer than five items on my board at any one time. Um, 2022, I'd like more crochet. That's, that's my challenge to myself. I would love more crochet. Have you seen the new Morit mag that's come out? It's um, a very modern crochet magazine and some of my friends have got it because they supported the Kickstarter. I nearly did, but I just thought, oh, is it for me? Oh, yes, it's for me. Um, <laughs> the patterns are really gorgeous and I'm really looking forward to seeing some reviews of those on my friends' podcasts and, you know, maybe, maybe purchasing a sneaky copy for myself. This brings me on to the final work in progress that has seen some love. And again, it's another new cast on. So this is Hollyberry, which is from West Yorkshire Spinners, who, as you know, is one of my favorite commercial sock yarns. It is blue face Leicester and nylon. It says wool, but actually looking at the breakdown on the website and uh, my day job stocks this yarn. So you get all the info. Pretty sure it's blue face Leicester and wool. No, and nylon. Blueface Wester, Lester, Wester, Blueface Wester, apparently. God, I cannot talk today. Uh, and nylon. And the reason I cast these on is because they are portable. The blanket is fine, but it's not portable. And I had hospital appointments and things to go to. Uh, I had my COVID jab, my second COVID jab, and I also had my flu jab, all within like a week. So <laughs> I had to cast on some socks. So here we are, it's the same recipe as always, 64 stitches, two by two rib, and then working in stocking stitch, which when you're knitting in the round, you just knit every row because you're never turning it to the wrong side. Um, and I've done one and a bit repeats. It was very efficient at the hospital yesterday. So yeah, and these were gonna be for me because my lovely dad had said he wasn't keen on the idea of Christmas socks, but me being me, when I'd started them, I took a photograph and emailed him and said, are you sure you don't want Christmas socks? And he got very excited and went, oh, yes, please. And um, he's a bit of a storyteller. He's, he was always making up stories when we were kids. Um, we had, instead of just a tooth fairy, we had tooth, I had a tooth fairy and my brother had a tooth wizard. And he used to write the most fantastic stories letters to us from our tooth fairy and tooth wizard when we lost a tooth and tell us all about the adventures in fairy and they're brilliant i've still got them and they were like 10 a4 pages long typed which when you're small is it's like a book it's amazing <laughs> um and he started a story based on these socks and i was like oh god dad how can i refuse how can i keep these for myself so these were going to go in my festive box of socks um now they've been appropriated by my dad, I am gonna have to ask Jude whether or not I can count these still for the festive sock along, even if I'm giving them away. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm sure he'll be all right with that. Don't know, I'll ask, I'll ask him, I'll find out what the rules are. But yes, yeah, so I'm, I'm enjoying it, it's, it's different. It's not just a plain stripe like the ones you can see behind me here, the Blue Lagoon ones that I finished my dad recently. And yeah, to be honest, the way I'm feeling so tired, I just want to knit on these the whole time, but I'm trying to be really good and save them for those appointments. And I have appointments every week at the moment. So, you know, 
they'll, they'll get done. And talking about socks and socks to dad works in progress. These are not on the needles yet. Obviously it's still in the skein. It's needle adjacent. Um, <laughs> and uh, this is Gingerbread House, which is the Christmas colorway from Stranded Dye Works 2019. I believe 2020 was zooming home for Christmas and this, yeah, okay, so this is 2019. I missed out on this back in 2019, uh, but the lovely Jude has been dyeing it up again and I managed to snag a skein. So these are gonna be socks for me. My dad is not getting hold of these. And also in acquisitions, stash enhancement, whatever you'd like to call it, this actually arrived, uh, did this arrive at the end of September? Yeah, I think it arrived right at the end of September before I last record, recorded the last podcast. This is this year's Christmas colourway from Stranded Dye Works, which is called Popcorn Garland. It is absolutely glorious. And as soon as I saw it, a design popped into my head. And you will notice that I am holding not one, but two skeins. So I have got Popcorn Garland on Merino Nylon. And I have Popcorn Garland on, I'm not sure what G calls this one, but it's um, Surrey Alpaca, basically. It's floof and it's gorgeous. The reason being is I'm gonna hold these two double and I have a fab cowl design, which has been swatched for, although be it not in this particular yarn, it's been swatched, the pattern is written. I just need to get it on my needles and get it knit up. Um, I will be looking for testers for this and fear not if you have not got Christmas yarn from Stranded yet this year and you are thinking about it. Um, I think, this was mentioned on his last podcast, but there are gonna be some more uh, Christmas festive skeins coming up in future updates. I believe there may even be a pre-order happening, um, possibly this week. Um, I will check and I'll put details on the screen here or down below. So you don't have to hold it double if you don't want to, but it is gonna be so snuggling held double. So yeah, so you definitely need one of these and you can optionally have one of these. And yeah, very, very exciting. That is it for works in progress. And actually finishing on a sock brings me nicely to this week's little featurette. Um, I'm quite enjoying doing these and I've had some lovely comments as well. And it seems that you're enjoying them as well. So uh, as long as there are thoughts going around my brain, I will continue to do them. <laughs> so without further ado, let's move on and find out what's been going around Gemma's brain this week. So we are now in October, 2021. I know, slightly scary. <laughs> and with it comes a flurry of socks. Um, there's Socks on Fire event going on, um, which some dyers and designers are involved in, and I'll put links down below. There's uh, Socktober, which I think, I think that's just a general thing that people get involved with, like Socktober, like Inktober. Um, I'll, I'll do some sort of looking up and see if I can find anything out about that. But at the moment, no, I just know it's October and people knit socks. There's the festive sock along from Stranded Dye Works that kicked off on the 1st of October. Uh, Vicky Bird Designs, who is fantastic in Tasha designer and she does garments and things, but also does a lot of socks designs. She is hosting Show Off Your Woolly Socks 2021. Um, Grenade Creations is doing a Halloween I think it's a Halloween sock along. I'm so sorry, Kirsty, if it's just a Halloween along in general, but I'm sure you're doing socks, aren't you? Hand spun socks? My brain's mush at the moment. So, I mean, that's five just off the top of my head. Uh, the lovely Sharon, S-C-R-1-T-N-O podcast uh, is a big sock fan and she's doing a year long stripy sock thing. It's not just for October, but still socks. Um, what else can I think of? Um, West Yorkshire Spinners released their Christmas colourway. I mean, it was released in September, but you've got the Christmas colourway for 2021 in their sock yarn. It's sparkly, it's sparkly. And so, yeah, there are just socks everywhere. So, I mean, and, and finding myself without a sock and needing to cast a sock on, logically, I'm thinking about socks. Now, I know not everyone is sock knitters and not everyone is convinced about sock knitting. Um, but I love them. I, I love them for a whole host of reasons. And people that don't love them, I think they seem to fall into two camps. One, it's just not for them. And two, in my experience, and it's a limited experience, 
they've tried and not found what works for them so they a, think they can't knit socks or um, think they don't enjoy knitting socks but then when they look at alternatives they, they often find a way and it's one of the reasons I love sock knitting because there really is something for everyone cuff down toe up put your heel in as you go afterthought heel there are at least five different ways of knitting them in the round um let's think so you've got magic loop short circulars double pointed needles two circulars what's the fifth one you've got the addy wonky ones they're fun that's three needles going on there so that's five different ways of, of making them off the top of my head you can also knit them flat i have done this i'm not keen to repeat it i much prefer knitting them in the round um, so yeah, there, there, there's something for everyone and so what I thought I'd do is share with you some of the things I love about socks and I was going to do it like last time, you know, my three top tips for making time to make things. Um, turns out my love of socks is knows no bounds. It knows no bounds. So I have ten things that just popped into my head for why I absolutely love making socks. Now, my sock knitting journey was not smooth. I started, gosh, would have been, I was at university before I met my husband. So I probably would have been about 18. Um, and I went to this fabulous little yarn shop uh, called Bodkins in Thundersley, which is in my home county of Essex. It's not my hometown, my home county. And uh, we were, I was introduced to sock knitting there and two circular needles. I'd never knit in the round before, so I didn't know any different. I think I might have tried double pointed or seen someone working with them and just been terrified. So double pointed is not for me. I do use double pointed for like the crowns of hats and things, but I digress. And I knit the first sock fairly quickly, but I halted at each stage. You know, you get that mental block where you think the next thing that happens is gonna be actually quite difficult. Um, so I did the calf, I did the leg, put off doing the heel for absolutely ages, did the heel, found it surprisingly smooth, put off doing the foot, put off doing the toe, and eventually after a year I'd done a pair of socks. Um, I don't know what's happened to them, I really really liked them, I think they must have got lost at university or something. And then I didn't knit socks again for quite some time, and the next time I really sort of picked up a pair of socks to knit, I don't know if it was the next time, it might have been my Mojito socks, which is West Yorkshire Spinners. And West Yorkshire Spinners Sock Yarn recommends, I'm sure it recommended a three millimetre needle. That's quite a large needle. Um, and I didn't like the fabric I got. So I was then had to learn about my own tension. And once again, I did it and then I put off the heel and then I put off the toe and it was just a mental block thing. Um, however, now I'm at the stage where I can just pick up my needles, pick up a ball of yarn, cast on and I'm away. I don't need the pattern, it's all in my head. Um, and I've kind of got to where I'm really happy with my vanilla sock pattern and started exploring other sock patterns and started designing, um, which you can see one of mine here. This is the old school sock. Um, and this one was actually knit for me as a sample by the lovely Hutch, who is dye candy. Uh, in one of my yarns, this is Cinder Dragon, um, <laughs> she got second sock syndrome. I've never seen, whoops, <laughs> a sock lunch. I've never seen the second sock. I don't think I ever will, but I don't mind. It's nice to have a sample. And the sample in my yarn as well, because my original one I did was in um, Stranded Dye Works Vintage Christmas. So I'll just stand my socks up again. See, I tried to do a bit of a set for you this week. You know, being all fresh. Um, yeah, so let's go through why I love socks. I think number one, top of my list, has to be that they are portable. Um, I'm trying... <sighs> there are often opportunities for you to knit if you can take them with you. So if you're going to a friend's or you're going to visit your mum, you know, if, you sit, if I'm sitting, I'm knitting basically. Uh, they're great for shoving in your handbag or your, or your backpack for hospital appointments, being in the waiting room, waiting for a train, on the train, great travel knitting. So you can really take them with you anywhere. My little sock sack here, which is one that was made by Snuggly Stars Yarns, just hangs on my wrist as well. It's great. So I can actually be in a queue 
and knitting. And this apparently is what knitting looks like with no needles and no yarn in your hands. Um, you do that and you can see why people, like, as an experienced knitter, I'm doing that. And then you can see why cartoons and things and TV shows get it so, so wrong. Uh, you can almost forgive them. But yeah, I can fit everything I need in there. So I've got my, my whip, whoo, wipe myself on the head, my mask. <laughs> I need to get to it and wash that. I've got tape measure, you know, you can fit everything you need in there. Um, crochet hooks, pick up drop stitches, and it just hangs on my arm and it's really easy. So along with the fact it's port quite literally portable, it's small, you take it anywhere. The other great thing about it is because you're just working in the round, it doesn't matter if you're in the middle of the round when you get interrupted or have to shove it back in your bag and go through because the doctor's called you now. And, you know, I mean, actually, when I picked this up this morning, ready to podcast, um, it was in the middle of a round, but it doesn't matter because it's in the round. You're just knitting a jewel. <laughs> so, I mean, casting on, I try and do before I go anywhere, because that can take a bit of concentration. Uh, knit two, pearl two rib, fine. I, I don't do knit two, pearl two rib on my socks. I do them for my dad, but for my socks, I like a one by one twisted rib. Yeah, I can hear the intake of breath and <gasps> why would you do that? I'll show you why I do that in a bit. Um, and then you just knit your tube. And I've even got to the point where I can quite happily knit a heel in the waiting room now. I mean, I have to be fairly confident of where I'm going to get to especially when turning, knitting the heels fine, the turning the heel, that's a little bit dodgy. You might find that you can uh, do it fairly well, or you might lose track of where you are. And yeah, but I, I can do it now. I like, I'm a proper sock knitter. So yeah, portable, and it doesn't matter if you get interrupted, particularly depending on where you are. And obviously grafting the toe, you don't want to be interrupted. But for the most part, it's a really take me anywhere, do me anywhere project. It's fantastic. Number two is that it is mindless. We live in a, in a really, really hectic world. We live in a really hectic world. I touched on this last week when we were talking about making time to make things. And sometimes you just want something comforting to do that you don't have to use your brain for. Like your brain is done with thinking for the day and processing things, but it's not done with making and, and and this is where like the process comes in it's really relaxing so you don't have to concentrate on it you can knit without looking lots of people I find can knit socks without looking if they're just doing in the round just plain vanilla now obviously if you're doing a lace pattern or a cable pattern it's not quite so simple but depending on what sock you're doing um you, you can you can hold a conversation with it I could be sat here now talking to you while knitting on my sock I'm not going to because I just don't feel comfortable doing that on the podcast. Um, I've done it a few times, sat and knit, but I, I don't know. I, I like to give you my undivided attention. What can I say? <laughs> um, so, yeah. And for that reason, it's great TV knitting. It's great, you know, chilling in the evening when you're knackered knitting. It's great. I can't sleep in the middle of the night. I need something to do to gently fall asleep to knitting. Are we keeping you up? Hello, am I interrupting your nap? Am I? What's this? What's this? They go review. They don't all want to see your tummy. They don't. They don't all want to see your tummy. No, they don't. Cover yourself up. You're indecent. Thank you. Puppies. Um. Yeah, and that that leads me on to number three, which is that they are meditative, and again, it ties in really nicely with the, the idea of sort of finding some calm. Um, loads of people took up knitting and crochet in lockdown. Um, some people to cope with the stress and anxiety of it, some people to fill their days where their days were no longer filled with going out and seeing people and charging. Commute had finished. I wonder how many of those people are now commuting again and taking their knitting or crochet. If you are a commuter and you're back out in the world, let me know, are you seeing more knitting and crochet and sewing and all the things in the wild now? Can you not kick me in the back, please, mister? No, just, no one needs to see it. Just, there we are. <laughs> it's just kicking me. Um, and for me, it really helps. So if I'm in the hospital waiting room, rather than just sort of thinking about everything that might be happening, or I knit my dad's Blue Lagoon sock, almost entirely one of them while I was admitted to hospital a few weeks ago 
and it just gives my mind something else to focus on. Um, there's a big trend for mindfulness, but actually I'm a huge believer in it. I suffer incredibly from stress and I did when I was a teacher. Um, I, I didn't feel stressed in my mind, but my body was like, girl, you're stressed. I was having palpitations, my hair was falling out, I had psoriasis, um, I had irritable bowel syndrome flare ups really regularly that would actually keep me off of work. And I didn't know what was going on. Um, turns out it was stress. <laughs> so mindfulness techniques, um, breathing, focusing, help. And actually for me, making is part of that. You are just being a diva, aren't you? Yerf, yerf. <laughs> yeah, I've got stuff in my hands, sorry. I'm not keen on that, are you? This might be heavily edited. I might leave it in. We'll see what you can see on the camera. <laughs> Um, yeah, so there's that and there's just something soothing about the repetitive motion of knitting, stitch after stitch, um, gradually making progress on something. And if you're doing an afterthought heel, you can just keep going. You don't even need to think about where um, you're placing the heel or stopping and concentrating. You can just knit a tube um, like these ones, for example were cranked for me as a shop sample by my lovely friend Jude on his uh, circular sock machine, the Elbaka Gearheart Speedster, in case you're wondering. And uh, he gave them to me just as tubes uh, attached. He, he, did a, he did a cuff for me, which is very kind. And then he's like, yeah, you've got you to cut them and put the heels in. I was like, do what? But actually it's not that scary. You're, you're basically just knitting another toe um, and you can choose where they go. So yeah. So, so there's that. So, I mean, obviously those, those were cranked on a machine, but hand knitting them, like these ones here, I did afterthought heels. I had a great time. I just knit one more stripe, one more stripe, one more stripe. There we are. And pop the heels in afterwards. The other great thing about knitting socks and why I love them, and this is not as lofty or practical or, you know, honourable as some of my other reasons. People just think you're a bit magic. <laughs> You've got two needles and a ball of yarn and a sock appearing at the end of it. Um, anywhere I go, if I'm knitting a sock, people are just, oh, that's so magic, so impressive. Um, a reassuring number of people don't quite clock on that the yarn is self-striping, which is good, but especially if they see you turn a heel or, you know, and how did you do that? It, it's just a bit magic. Um, the midwives at the hospital um, I go to, uh, when I was admitted, have, are trying now to convince me that they all need hand knit socks and, and uh, telling each other, oh, this, this is this is Gemma, she's here with us overnight for monitoring and she's gonna make us all socks. Where am I now? Huh. I might have to talk to one of my friends with sock machines and see if they can just crank me a load of tubes and then I'll pop peels in and toes in in a variety of different sizes and then just send a basket of socks to uh, to the maternity assessment unit. Um, it, yeah, I, I'll see. I'll see. I've not said that out loud to anyone at the hospital, of course, but yeah, there you go. Um, so yeah, it's a simple reason. People think you're a bit magic, which is nice. <laughs> Number five is that they are useful. You cannot decide, dis, you cannot disagree with the usefulness of socks. They are good for keeping your toes warm. They're great for making sure your boots don't slip. They're great on hikes. Everyone has a use for socks somewhere at some point. I mean, I do know there are a couple of people who like, it's my uncle. I have never seen him wear a pair of socks, right? I mean, I know he must do in his work boots but everywhere else he's always barefooted. Um, but my grandma started knitting him socks and he absolutely loves them. <laughs> so he has uh, socks in his work boots um, that are hand knit. So they're useful. I mean, how many shawls realistically does one need? How many blankets realistically does one need? But socks, I think they're always useful. They also make fantastic gifts. And I've got a couple of examples here. These ones, the uh, sample that my friend cranked for me on his sock machine in opium from my yarns uh, are actually going to go to someone who I know loves the colour red and black. Um, I'm hoping they fit. I've checked. They should do. <laughs> I really hope they fit. Um, but yeah, so that's a gift. And they make people happy because it's something you've made for them. And it's not like just making a scarf or a hat. I mean, socks are kind of tailor fit. You need to really put some thought into them. 
Um, I don't know, I think if ever I knit a sock for a sock knitter, I'd probably just knit the tube and the toe and, you know, say, put your own heels in. Uh, but these, for example, were a gift. Um, you may have seen them before if you follow Stranded, Stranded Dye Works. Um, this is a pair that G had made, oh goodness, um, 2019, I think. Yeah, it must have been 2019, because 2020 we were entirely in lockdown. Um, when I went to visit, um, at the very beginning of 2020, um, he very kindly gifted me a pair of socks. They're colour work, they are in West Yorkshire Spinners, and they are uh, lovely. I absolutely love them. I can't remember what the grey colour was called, but the cream is milk bottle. Um, and do you know what? I just, I love my gift socks <laughs> that I've been given. Um, so I've got a few pairs actually. And when I put them on, it's just, it's like, oh, friends. <laughs> and you all know how much my dad is loving his hand-knit socks, right? He just, it, they make him so happy. He's actually wearing them now. He's got over the kind of, I need to keep them special and nice thing. There's also something for everyone. So if you are just someone who likes reassuring plain knitting, vanilla socks. If you want to knit cuff down, this that's for you. Toe up, that's for you. There are different cast-ons, there are different designs, there are different weights of yarn that you can use. You know, you could do, you don't have to do four ply fingering weight, you can do, you know, DK, worsted, Aran. Someone I know for the great winter castle has just done chunky socks, which make great house socks for winter. There is literally something for everyone. There are different heels. So if you have a high instep, you could use a, a different type of heel. I mean, I think the heel flap and gusset works really well for people with high instep. Um, you could do an afterthought heel for people with like a shallower heel. Um, there are different methods of doing the toe. You can, if you do toe up, you can, and different toe shapings. Mine are all pretty standard. I have one toe, my go-to toe which is this kind of wedge toe. Um, but I'm really excited to try different ones. And it's the same with the yarn as well. It's it's relatively cheap. So out of a skein of hand dyed yarn, which might cost you about 18 pounds, 20 pounds, depending on your foot size and whether you, what sort of length socks you want, you can get two pairs of socks if you're using fingering weight. So 10 pounds for a pair of socks isn't too bad. Um, and also they're really practical. So it's a nice way of using hand dyed yarn and, and but also like the pair which is hang on here. This pair, which is the Lara's Legacy sock, um I actually made using I think it was Serdar or King Cole, but the ball of yarn gave me enough for two pairs of socks, and I think it cost me two pounds ninety nine. So it's accessible, you can do it. You don't have to use really posh hand dyed yarn. I love the commercial yarn from West Yorkshire Spinners, which is £7.50 a ball. Doing pairs for my dad, I don't think leaves me with enough to do shorty socks for me, because my dad is a UK size 11, I think, and I'm, I'm, a, I'm a three and a half to four, but I'm wide, so um, socks that fit me fit my friends with size five or six B. Um, so yeah, but, you know, if I'm doing them for myself, I can get two pairs out of them. And there are things that you can do with your scrappy socks as well. So it can be sort of as cheap or as expensive as you choose to make it, but also you're making something practical. And it's not like, you know, hats, you might have one or two to get you through the winter, socks you kind of need a few pairs of, so they're good. <clears throat> and so that's kind of like cheap and accessible kind of come together for me. Um, and the final one is that they are better than shop-bought socks. The reason they're better than shop-bought socks, um, shop-bought socks are normally not natural fibres, and the beauty of natural fibres, particularly wool, is that it is naturally antibacterial, it's breathable, they keep your feet cooler in the summer, warmer in the winter, you don't sweat, you don't see sheep running around, you know, dripping in sweat, do you? <laughs> and they last longer, and they just bring you more joy and you know you can customize them so if you've got walking boots you can maybe go for a double thickness or you can welly boots you can go for taller ones and shorter ones so yeah that's that's why i love socks um and if you are a fellow sock lover you know share the love in the comments below perhaps you are new to sock knitting perhaps you've never tried it perhaps you've tried it and it's not worked 
uh, perhaps you have questions about sock knitting, do let me know in the comments below. Um, and this is Tales from Midnight Diary, so I'm gonna cheekily segue into the fact that all this thinking about socks has made me finally take the plunge and bring my sock structure course, which is a two part course, to the interwebs. So I'll be hosting a virtual sock knitting course on uh, Zoom and it is next Friday the 22nd and the following Friday the 29th of October. In the two sessions you will actually make a complete sock from start to finish. Um, there's a little bit of homework because in my physical sessions when I teach this I actually cast on um, on all five different methods that I mentioned before of knitting in the round and everyone gets to pass them around and try and find which works for them. Um, so there is a little bit of homework for this if you want to do something other than two circulars. But uh, yeah, so then we've got a week in between for you to carry on knitting. At the end of it, you end up with your mini sock. And we talk sock yarns, we talk sock structure, architecture, how to choose your heel, how to shape things um, and take you through from beginning to end and Kitchener stitching. Plus you get a copy of my vanilla sock pattern, which isn't currently available anywhere else at all. Um, so yeah, so you get online support. It is £30, not 40 I misquoted that last week for the two sessions and they are two and a half hours. So no, or an hour and a half, 7.30 till nine, so an hour and a half. So uh, three hours of tuition for £30, which isn't too bad. So if you want to consider signing up to that, I'll drop the link down below. It can also be found on my website. Places are filling up and they are limited. So if you're thinking of doing that, then, then don't delay. <laughs> So yeah, tell me all the things that you love about socks uh, or maybe loathe about socks. I've um, had some, I've put some questions on Instagram to find out what your thoughts are. Let's, let's, let's take this to the community. Right, so sorry about that. I ran out of space on my phone and didn't realize until after I said ta at the end of the podcast. So let's uh, say, take it to the community. That's where we were. So bear with me while I just check the responses on Instagram. Uh, first person says, I really want to be a sock knitter, but I haven't found my perfect recipe yet. Now, I love the use of that word, yet. It's, um, so I'm going to sort of educationally geek out now. I used to be a teacher. It's very much a growth mindset idea that. So it's not, I can't, I haven't found it. It's not happening. I've not found it yet. And that is so true with socks because there are so many different ways of making them. Um, finding the one that's just right for you, just right for your likes and needs and your feet. It's really possible. Um, so as I said, toe up, cuff down, different heels. Some people like to knit the underneath of their socks, um, the sole uh, in reverse stocking stitch. So you get the smooth knit stitches against your skin rather than the pearl bumps. Um, some people don't like the feel of a seam of grafted at the toe. So um, toe up works really well for them. Uh, yeah, and there's a fantastic book by Lara Neal called Sock Architecture. And I know that uh, Earth Turns Girl podcast um, is going through, I'm, I'm, oh God, I'm the worst person. I'm totally blanking on my first name. I'm rubbish with names. I do podcast names just fine. Um, but yeah, she is working her way through and trying different ones and sort of on this fantastic sock learning journey, uh, which I've been following. I'm really enjoying on her podcast. Go and check that out. Uh, Sam says, love handmade socks, socks, hate knitting the second one. For odd socks forever. Yes, odd socks forever. I am, uh, <laughs> my, I, someone in my family pointed out when they were quite young, I have two feet. Why can't I wear two different types of sock? It's got a point. <laughs> I'm new to sock knitting and want to find my vanilla recipe so I can knit away mindlessly. Well, I have to know that you have signed up for my sock structure course starting next week. So hopefully we can find you the perfect recipe together. Sock knitter with the odd crochet pair, love tying different heels and toes. Yes, knitting socks isn't just you knit a sock and then you're done and you can like, it's just repeating all the same old, same old. There is something different every single time, which is such good fun. <laughs> So without further ado, <laughs> I'm gonna wrap this, this sock loving up. And uh, one thing I will say though, is that this pair of socks here that I showed off earlier, you may know them as the Lara's Legacy socks if you've been watching this for a while. Um, you might know, so I have a daughter, she'd be turning three and a half, or about three, well just, just over three and a half now. Um, 
and uh, her name's Lara. She passed away at 32 days old and I was knitting this sock design um, when she was with us and so I completed it in her honour and named them the Lara's Legacy Socks and every penny from the proceeds of this sock pattern um, goes towards Bliss, the charity for the newborn. So socks don't only make great gifts, they're not only beautiful things to knit, but they can actually do some good in the world as well. And we've raised just under a thousand pounds for the sale of these socks already. Um, it's Baby Loss Awareness Week. I campaign tirelessly to break the taboo about talking about the children who have died. Um, it shouldn't be a taboo in society. And Baby Loss Awareness Week is doing a lot of work for that as well. And it's this week from the 9th to the 15th of October. And from the bottom of my heart, everyone who has purchased the pattern, knit a pair of Lara's Legacy Socks, is, is considering knitting a pair of Lara's Legacy Socks, gifted the pattern to someone else, thank you. It means such a lot, I can't begin to tell you. So yeah, um, let me know all your thoughts about socks below. Get involved in the comments on YouTube. And don't forget that occasionally I do spot prizes for people commenting on my YouTube videos. So last week there were a few people commenting and I have decided to give away a copy of a pattern of your choice from my Ravelry or Payhip store to the person who is flashing up on the screen here. Congratulations, if you would like that prize then please do get in touch. If it's not for you then get in touch and just let me know and I can pass it on to the next person. And for that matter if you do choose the Lara's Legacy socks I will then personally donate the proceeds to the charity so we're not losing out on that. Um, at all so yeah it's there's not necessarily gonna be prizes every week for people commenting on the youtube channel it's uh it's just a draw that i do occasionally um and yeah so just to, just a way of saying thank you for interacting etc so without further ado i'm gonna wrap this up again for the second time i'm gonna take my sock and go and edit the podcast and yeah i will see you very very soon for another crafty chat. Hope you've enjoyed this. Do take care, stay safe, happy crafting. Bye.